Hello and welcome to my shop here on December 19th. Christmas is just a few days away. And uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to change a few more of these old capacitors. But I kind of want to do it in a bit of a fun and interesting way. So just in thinking about that, um, I think what might be interesting is to focus on the detector circuit, the detector tube, capacitors related to it, and uh, the AVC system. Uh, and a system may be a strong word for it, and uh, just pursue it that way. So maybe the first thing to do is to try to find out a little more about how the radio is operating before I get going. Um, the capacitors that are involved in this are, uh, this is the detector tube here, that little capacitor there, uh, it's a mica capacitor, and likewise so is this one, so I'm not inclined to change them out or anything like that. Not without some strong indication they need to be looked at. Uh, if we follow the AVC line back, so we come off the bottom of the second IF here, where the uh, rectified output of the diode in here exists, comes back, goes through a great big 2.2 uh, mega ohm resistor and then it encounters this capacitor this is a tubular one so this one would be of interest and further along we have this one here but this is a mica capacitor and it's actually uh, right in series with the antenna signal coming in again that's not one I'm going to be interested in changing not offhand just this guy, there must be some more of interest in here. Well, maybe not. Maybe this is the whole deal, is this one capacitor. Um, well, it looks to be that way. Okay, well, I'm going to find that capacitor. Um, I've already hunted down these two resistors, which were really tough to find. This one in particular. And I'm going to show you why. So tough to find it. Not tough, tough, tough. Come on, tough. Nothing's tough here. Just took a little bit of time to find it because it's a little bit hidden from view. So it's tucked tucked in behind this resistor quite a bit. Let me grab a different camera here and see if we can get a look at it. Okay. I'm not sure of the focus on this. It's on automatic. So behind this capacitor, tucked in there, is a resistor. Now that's supposed to be 2.2 megaohms. But when I look at it, and I'm sorry, I'm sort of at the limit of the focus of this particular camera. Well, that looks more like brown, silver, green, which is kind of weird. The silver thing shouldn't be there. So I'm not too sure what's going on with that. Now this is supposed to be connected directly to a one mega ohm resistor. That guy, oh come on camera. We're looking right at it in the middle. It's this it's this guy right here. He too has got some funny colors on it. Orange, black, green. Hmm. So that's really brown, black, green, but the brown is turned orange. And this one here. You know, the green is the giveaway, and green means you're up in the mega ohm range. It's in absolutely the correct position. You see how one leg of this resistor goes up and connects into one of the IFs, and the other leg comes down and connects into the other IF. That's a pretty certain thing. We should be able to spot that on the schematic quite easily. Which we're going to do. I'm going to put it on the computer screen, though. We'll take a we'll take a good look at it. Uh, I think a really good place to hook up my my voltmeter there uh, is right between these two resistors. And when we look at the uh, schematic, I think it'll become apparent why. Okay, let's do that. Let's check out the schematic here. Okay, here we are. So the two resistors we were just looking at is this one, a 2.2 mega ohm resistor, and this 1 mega ohm resistor. I talked about these yesterday a little bit. They're in a circuit where no 
current flows. So what pretty much no current flows, no DC current. So pretty much whatever the voltage is here, even though there's a big resistor, the same voltage will appear here and will appear here too, unless there's something wrong. Um, my uh, voltmeter is a high impedance. Uh, all modern voltmeters are high impedance. Uh, my older one is a vacuum tube voltmeter and it's up around, and I was stuck on this yesterday. I can't remember now. It's either one mega ohm or ten. I think it's ten, but I'm not absolutely sure. If it's one, it's a bit of a problem dropping it in here. It's liable to pull this voltage down a touch because it's going to be pulling it. It needs a little bit of current to do its thing. It's going to pull that current through this huge resistor and it drop this a little bit. But I think if we're careful, we can detect this happening by playing the radio, putting the meter on and off, and hearing variation in the operation of the radio. I think this is probably a good spot to, to detect or to, detect, to, to measure the uh, ABC voltage. My thinking here is before doing anything, I guess this is the only thing I'm going to do something to, uh, what I would want to do is uh, operate the radio with a very controlled input. So I'm going to use the signal generator. Supply uh, some amount of signal. See what this voltage is crank up the input to the radio to what would represent a very strong signal. See what's happening to this voltage, how it's changing. Uh, this voltage is reflective of the strength of the output of the IF here. It is the output of the IF. It's just been rectified and then it's been... Um, and then this capacitor will slow down variations at this point and probably do away with any slight amount of RF or audio that's making it back here. We don't want any audio signal here. It'd be interesting to cut this out. I'm pretty sure the radio would go wild. But we don't want it to go wild. Ultimately, I'll change this out, and then we'll see what has happened to these voltages with the same input signals, and also test this capacitor. In particular, test this one for leakage. If this guy is leaky, bearing in mind it doesn't have much pressure on it, Look, it's only a 100 volt capacitor according to the requirement here. Uh, it's not going to leak a lot, but it doesn't take a lot in this high resistant circuit or high impedance circuit. You don't have to take out much charge from here uh, to, to, to depress this or, or cause a current flow through this. Just like I was saying with my voltmeter and draw this voltage down a bit because of a voltage drop here. So it's just a little bit tricky testing these sort of uh, sensitive or high impedance circuits, but with a little bit of care we can get away with it. Um, that's about all I want to say at this point, because I'm really just targeting on replacing capacitors. So, okay, let's get the test going. So I already have my signal generator warmed up. It's because it's cold here today. It's about minus eight outside. A little pretty chilly, and uh, it's nice to come into a shop full of tube equipment, and you get that nice warm glow coming off it. So there's a little bit of heat in this. A little bit of heat in that guy. He's got no tubes. There's no tubes in there, but it's still warm. Yeah, it's not like transistor equipment uh, necessarily draws no current and doesn't get warm. Uh, okay, uh, I've got my voltmeter ground connection done this way, just to get this big honk and clip farther away from the radio and reduce the chance of a short circuit happening when I'm not looking. Uh, we're not going to hook this up. What we're going to do is we're going to hook up the signal generator really don't care much about how I connect the signal generator up. In this case, um, oops, let me just have an idea what I'm up to here. This little box I just put in there has a capacitor in it, a couple other components. That's a uh, impedance matching device between the low impedance 50 ohms coming out of there and the expected antenna type impedance uh, 300 ohms 200 ohms something like that 
enough to keep my signal generator happy. The benefit of doing this is I should be able to calibrate the signal generator with a little more accuracy as to what's coming out of here. Don't really care how much, just I just care I do the same thing a couple of times, so I need some kind of uh, quantitative notion as to what voltage is on here. And we'll stick this in the antenna. Now this radio has a wire sticking out here. This has got to be for the antenna, for an extended antenna. We're going to use that. Okay, so I'm going to put this on here. Now a good question is, where should this go? This go on B minus or go on the chassis? So I'm going to put it onto the chassis, in this case, right at the front end of the radio. I think that should be okay. We'll put them on and take them off and just fool around a bit to make sure that things are doing what, what I want them to do. So I've got a little bit of a tangle up here. Let's get this out of here. Okay. Just fire up the radio. Shouldn't be any too much of a concern about doing that. I'm going to turn on my meter. Okay. Fire up the radio. Firing. Not quite. Firing now. So I already have the signal generator connected. Frequency is set at, can't see it there on the, but it's a 590. I'm going to put it a little bit of a different spot, but uh, we'll wait till things get going. There it is right there. It's a very strong signal. We're going to get, knock it down. So I want to get rid of all this crazy noise. You can hear this nozzle coming out of there. We'll go somewhere where it's a little quieter. We need to do something else. Because being quiet, I'm looking for a spot where there'd be very little IF output. Not much coming in the antenna, not much coming out of the IF. Well, that's tricky to do because there's unmodulated noise signals kicking around here. And you cannot hear coming out of the speaker. And you think you found a nice quiet spot ABC voltage relaxed, maybe not. So let's do what happened there. Some kind of coincidence. There we go. <laughs> uh, funny things happening there. What was that? Something came and went. I don't know. Let's put it on full voltage too. Okay, before we go any further, take my voltmeter. It's set for a negative voltage. That's my expectation here. And a small voltage. 5 volts, full scale. Yeah, the meter's pretty jumpy. I'm going to go right on the bridge of those two resistors see what happens to the radio. So I hear no variation in the sound coming from the radio. Oh, you can see the meter going up and down. That confirms that's a good spot to hook up. Unfortunately I'm going to use a cook lead here. This is not the best approach. I just don't want more and more wire hanging around. But here we go. Can I get my fingers in there safely? Pretty sure I can. You know clip leads have a mind of their own? Yes, they do. Okay, so we, we don't think we need to listen to this right now. The next little experiment is, uh, so what happens to the ABC voltage as we, we change the power output of the generator? So 
a little hard to get all this on camera because uh, there's this huge bundle of wires here that are kind of in the way, but I'm going to get an idea like that. Just untangle my tripod here. You can hear this uh, when I change these. You can hear the big clunky sound as I change this. So first, I'm going to calibrate the uh, signal generator here, just to have the best notion of what's coming out of it. The way we do that. Put this like that. Cut this back, 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 back. Okay. Set this meter full scale. Ten. Ten microvolts times one hundred. 1,000 microvolts coming out of here anyway. Exactly what makes it to the radio it may not be exactly the same amount. Should be close enough. This control is all the way, so we're in a calibrated state. It is modulated 30%, 400 hertz. We should hear it. Oh, it's not, it's not tuned. This is not tuned to this. Well, we should do that. We should do that. I should move these wires out of the way. How about I just do that? There. It's a little better. Let me even move this over here. Good. Good enough. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, so I'm going to tune the signal generator until we hear it come out of here. Let me turn it up so we don't miss. There it is. Now you can see the AVC meter reacting. There's the tone. Okay. Now, let's reconnect and disconnect the meter a couple times again. I'll do it down. Nothing happening. Perfect. So now I'm going to want to make some notes of the uh, voltage. I'm going to try a couple different input levels, get a couple different voltages here, write it down on a piece of paper. I would use my fantastic memory, but I can't remember what I did with it. So it's here. I don't know how often I've mentioned it, but the surprising thing about these cameras I use is they have really no radio uh, interference output. It's very surprising to me. Because just about everything else does, it seems, these days. Okay, so I'm going to make a little chart here. So the output here, well, let's go down. Let's start. Really nothing coming from here now. And what we've got is the noise or junk signals. This turned up. And tune around and try to get this to the lowest. The lowest I can get it. It's going pretty low there. I've reached the end of the road. Let's just go the other way for fun. That was the signal generator. I, I wouldn't mind having this somewhat in the middle. And that looks like about as low as we're going to get right there. Okay, what are we tuned to? We are tuned to, well, right at the bottom of the band. Even lower. Okay, what does it sound like? That it still is an interference signal of some sort. Almost certainly coming from my computers or my computer screens in here. Good, now I'll retune the signal generator over there. Uh, way down, 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 down. You know, if I turn off the big light, you might be able to read these numbers too. And if I move that. A little hard to see. 614 is what it says. Well, 
practically on 590, which is where there's a station. Okay, watching the uh, meter, volt meter. That's with it tuned away. Tune it in. So regardless of the pitch of the sound you're hearing, that's that's from some heterodyne with a uh, interfering signal. I guess that's further proof that there's still a noise signal coming through the IF and pushing this voltage up a bit. Let's reduce this down. Okay, down, down. So we're going to call that the bottom. That's the bottom. So I'm going to write the voltage down here. Bottom voltage is. We're on the 5 volt scale. It's really 0.5 volts. It's slowly going lower as if something's discharging. I think that's the case. 0.5 volts at the bottom. Now, we're going to want to raise this up. I mean, let me just double check the calibration. It's right on. Okay, and we're going to raise this up. So this, this would be 10 microvolts, nothing. Okay, at 100 microvolts, we see a tiny, tiny increase here. So that's the bottom here bottom here is 100 microvolts. Okay, now what if we go from 100 to 1,000? Okay, so right here, 1,000 microvolts, and we get just over 1, 1.2. 1.2 1 ABC volts. Okay, we go up by another factor of 10. It's a big jump. Now we're at 10,000 microvolts. The reason I'm doing this is so I can see the change after I do the one capacitor. I check these two resistors for value too, but they're not likely to be wrong. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's not the best statement. So at 10,000 microvolts now, we're, we've got all of 3.3 volts coming out. Okay, and what happens if we just whack this thing? Whack is right. At this point there's no more uh, noise coming out of the speaker, it's all signal, but it sounds just a little buzzy to me. So we're probably overdriving things a bit, but that's fine. So now we are at 10,000 times 10, that's 100,000. 100,000 microvolts and the result is 6 volts. Yep, 6 volts. Okay, so that's our starting position here. Now, which now let me uh, turn it off. Is there anything more I need to do before I think I got everything's fine. So we'll shut it off. Next step is uh, locate the key capacitor. The capacitor, if you remember, seeing on the schematic, is uh, also connected to the same point where the voltmeter is connected right now. And so I'm going to look in there. A little bit extra light. And lo and behold, there is a capacitor sitting back here. It's not this one. I thought it would be this guy. It's that one back there. Is that really it? It's a 100 volt capacitor. So that's it for sure. We're going to cut them out and then we're going to interrogate them. Okay, so let's just pull it the plug here. I'll just put that there. Come with me, capacitor. Free. He's free. Going to be free. Zero 0.05, is that right? 0.05, yep. 
out you come. Making a run for it, but I got him. Okay, this one. Well, there's some gaps here. But this one looks to be in, in, in somewhat better condition than some of the other ones, but that doesn't mean much. Made in Canada. Oh, it's a Canadian. It's a Canadian capacitor. Bound to be in good shape. Okay. Let's see what's going on. So the weather here has been really weird. It got really warm, 15, 16 degrees just a couple days ago. Melted off a whole foot of snow that was out there, completely gone, green, everything. But today, everything's beautifully white again with just a an inch or so of snow, a couple inches of snow, maybe that much, that much snow. Light fluffy stuff. Last night uh, when I looked out the windows in the front of our house, the snow was all sparkly because it's very crystalline when it's very light. So the street light on that makes it all kind of sparkle. It's really, really nice to see. Okay, expectation here. My guess is I put 50 volts across this capacitor and the eye is gonna open partially. If it opens up just like you see it now, it's a little hard to see, but there's a bit of a dark pie down here. All the way open, it's a thumbs up. Okay, Canadian capacitor, you're shot. So yeah, it's a little hard to see the detail in the camera. But the eye didn't just close, it actually overlapped. So that's telling me at 50 volts, overlap. She's a dud. Now, how would this be enough? Uh, to interfere with the operation of the ABC? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. It would leak in here be enough. Uh, we didn't. I didn't measure its capacitor. It's a very leaky capacitor. Um, you know, measuring its capacitance. My experience is no. You can't. That's my experience on that. Okay, so I'm going to stick stick a nice new 0.05 capacitor in there, and we will test them again. Okay, nice shiny new yellow capacitor is in there. Ready to give the radio another test. Here we go. In the meantime, I'm going to double check the calibration. My grand old generator has been running here for a bit. So, check it. We go like that. Right on the money. Good. Turn it back down. Get my notepad out here. We are now ready. Switch on. Oh, radio's on. But it's not plugged in. Well, that's a bit of a problem. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. This came off, and the voltmeter lead needs to go on. How about some light? I've got the radio switched on again. I'm going to put this lead on right between those two resistors. Ooh, hot diggity dog. What's all that? Okay, um, uh, Okay. so things look a little different already. Why would that be? So let me just make sure the signal generator output is minimal. Voltage is, is right down to nothing here. Ooh, I left the solder. Never leave your solder laying around. It's like that. Shame, shame, shame. Well, that's kind of odd. Um, to me, it's a little odd. The bottom was 0.5 volts. Oh, I know what it is. I have this set differently. So we're a little lower than 0.5 volts here. Um, that's odd. Did, did the pop just come over the... Uh, no, I just see my own. This is my own uh, audio uh, level meter here. 
trying my best to have enough meters around I can keep track of the level of my voice and the recording and all that. Thought I saw it jump up. Okay, too many observations. So we're back in here, it's lower. What's different? Is there anything different? Anything different? Well, just the capacitor. Well, I think that's the difference. It just seems to be in the wrong direction to me. But I'm going to make a note of it. So instead of 0.5 now, it's 0.3. 0.3. Hmm. Okay, next thing we want to do is make sure the signal generator is tuned properly. So watch the ABC meter. I'm going to turn up the level here a little bit. Tune the signal generator. It's going to be just a wee bit off, didn't it? Okay, back down. Right down. the first time we can see an effect and hear an effect. So there we are. Point 0.3 is at the bottom now for reasons I can't fully explain. Well you can listen to me as I snap that control. I mean it's obvious what I'm doing. So just watch that meter there. Let go there. It's a small shop I have here. It gets a little crowded. Okay, ready to do our experiment. So right now we are at uh, 10 microvolts. It's 100 microvolts. And I saw it come up. I saw it come up. So we're going to mark this. 100 microvolts. Didn't come up much. Let me go back down. So it's up to now, 0.35. Hardly changed. 0.35 volts. Now we'll go up to a thousand. That's a thousand microvolts. And on the meter, we have five volts scale. 1.6. 1.6. We'll have another 10. Okay, now we're on still on the 5 volt scale, so we're up around 0.39 uh, or 3.9. 3.9 volts. And now I'm just going to turn down the radio a bit, and we're going to we're going to whack it now with. 100,000 microvolts. Oh, that's 0.1 volts. And this is going to be 7.6 volts. Okay. That is the end of the experiment. I must admit that most of the time when I do I attempt, I don't do, I attempt quantitative testing, usually somewhere along the line I've, I've buggered it up. And maybe in this case I have and I don't even know it. But it looks like we have some interesting results here. So, let's just take a look. My lousy chart. So this is kind of before and after. So before at a thousand microvolts we had 1.2, then we got 1.6. These are negative voltages here. 1.6. So a little more. We got a little more. 10,000 microvolts. We were at 3.3, now we're at 3.9, so we got a little more. And at 100,000 microvolts, it was 6, and now we got 7.6. That's that's quite a bit more. And I'm just considering the ratios here. Uh, so if we, if we think this is half of that, the variation was point uh, six, so you expect double 0. 0.6 would be at 1.2, 7.2, 7.6. So it seems as if it's a nonlinear relationship 
as I pump more and more uh, voltage into the radio, the ABC goes higher, higher, or lower, lower, if you want to think about the negativity of it. The interesting thing is before, the only uh, I only got an effect when I got to 1,000. But in this case, we could see an effect at 100. So would that mean the radio's able to pull signals or be sensitive to signals now at a lower level than it was because something has changed exactly what exactly how to explain that I don't really know uh, somehow the capacitor was failing to remove something before remove some noise remove some signal or something some audio or I don't know what so definitely improvement um, nothing here is surprising. It is, if, if it was any different, then I'd be scratching my head. But I'm in the worst position of all, and that's where your test results confirm your suspicions. Now you think your suspicions are true, but of course they really aren't, but you don't know, because you have confirmatory evidence. Yeah, no, actually I think it is exactly what it appears to be. I don't, I don't think anything really funny happened here. Uh, just double checking my eyeballs quickly and I got on full power very good now it was really distorted at the high level or at the high level sounds a little buzzy to me but that that's an investigation for another day so I think that's all I'm gonna do today I'm just gonna do the one capacitor that's it I got other exciting things to go and do today I almost forgot to actually just play the radio and test it. So I have it on. And all the equipment is disconnected and shut off, in fact. That would seem to me the volume is much lower, but let's find out what happens here. So. Happen to have it tuned right there. Lucky break. I think that's a great improvement, in fact. Let's see if we can get another station here. swinging the antenna too close to something. Okay, we'll do it like this. Pretty quiet. Strangely quiet. That's strangely quiet. Another station. Ah. Okay. Let's see how I can fix that problem. Grab, grab some high quality insulating material. So the way I remember this radio was it picking up one station only. Now it's picking up a couple. But uh, it certainly doesn't sound very good. Okay, let's keep going. It's really quiet between stations. Like, that's crazy quiet. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. How do we get, how do we get all the way down there? So 
I'm going to suggest it may be an alignment issue that's doing that. So, but I notice the sound quality is not the greatest coming out of this radio. Now, there's a chance it's the speaker that's responsible for the distortion. It can be surprising how a speaker can sound like for sure there's something overloaded or something's running into cutoff and it's just just a speaker with a rubbing voice coil. It can be very, very fooling. And I'm pretty easy to get fooled here. Well, that's good. I think that's an improvement in performance and I suspect alignment will, will, will really bring it up. And only after that can we really consider the actual sound quality that's coming out of the radio. Very good. Okay, so thanks so much for watching and uh, have a great day. See ya.